Good day, everyone. Welcome to Film Reviews. In this review, I'll give a brief rundown of a 2015 thriller movie named Even Lambs Have Teeth. Before getting into the narrative, wishing all a fantastic and joyful day. Without further delay, let's dive into the story. The film opens with two best friends, the uptight Katie and the promiscuous Sloan who are looking forward to their upcoming out-of-town trip. They will be working at a farm called Echo Field Organic Farms for a month, so they can save up to go shopping at New York City. On the next morning, they get picked up by Katie's cop Uncle Jason and will be staying at Jason and his girlfriend's place for a night before going to the farm. As they settle in the new place, Sloan suggests that they should come up with fake names. During their stay in the town, Sloan comes up with the name Heather, while Katie comes up with the name Ripley. The day after, Uncle Jason dropped the two off at a station, from where they will take the bus to the farm. Being the protective cop uncle he is, Jason tells them that they should come up with a safe word in case they get in trouble. The deal is, they need to send a code word at the end of every text. In other words, Jason asks Katie to send him a different code word in the alphabetical order every day. The safe words of the day are Apple. After the uncle leaves, the two still have to wait for the bus, which is scheduled to arrive in approximately an hour. And they decide to wait at the cafe. They immediately catch the interest of two townsmen and end up sharing a table with them. The two women then introduce themselves with the fake names they made up the other night, while the two men introduce themselves as brothers, whose names are Jad and Lucas. The brothers offer to give them a ride to their workplace, and although Katie is initially reluctant, she gives into Sloan's silent plea. The two end up climbing into the young men's blue truck, However, things don't go as planned. Jed deliberately passes by the farm, where Katie and Sloan work, which confuse the two women. Are we gonna turn around somewhere? And at last they arrive. Where are we? This is our family's place. The two women are welcomed in by Jed and Lucas, sketchy mother who invites them to have some tea before heading to the farm. Once they get inside, Katie receives a text from her cop uncle, and with their agreed safe words, she let him know that she's fine. Meanwhile, the two eat some pie and drink some tea, of which they probably shouldn't do, but they do it anyway. Their sight becomes blurred. As it turns out, there's a drug in their drinks. The two immediately run for their lives after realizing something's off. Unfortunately, Jed and Lucas manage to knock them unconscious and carry them back inside. On the next day, Katie and Sloan are panicking and chained up in the middle of the woods. Jed walks up to them and tells them that they will now be living here and they are given basic amenities to survive, such as clothes, a bed and a toilet. We move on to the next scene, where Katie and Sloane are now dressed and Jed's boss, Boris, shows up and takes Katie's phone to check if anyone knows their whereabouts. At this point, he discovers that Katie and Sloane lied about their names as well as the code word she used in the text message. Katie and Sloan finally are forced to tell him that the word apple is a safety word. As soon as everything is back on track, Katie and Sloan are getting ready to take a bath with makeshift showers right when the town sheriff shows up with his gun out. As it turns out, the sheriff is a piece of shit who condones human trafficking, and he has come to rape one of the women. 
After the evil sheriff gets his fill, Sloane visits a shaken-looking Katie to soothe her. On the other side of town, Uncle Jason is getting worried because the latest text he received from Katie contains the same safe word that she used yesterday. Back inside the woods, Jed and Lucas welcome another customer, who from this point on we shall refer to a scruffy guy. He then picks Sloane and brings her inside the trailer. Unsurprisingly, scruffy guy is a bit of a psycho. Back to the cop uncle, he finally makes a call to Sloane and Katie's place of work and learns that they never showed up for work yesterday. Convinced they are in trouble, he rushes to look for them meanwhile. Sloan and Katie's day is just about to get even worse because the next customer that shows up is even sketchier than before. Jed and Lucas rush to cover their heads as the next customer walks closer. Pig Mask Dude picks Sloan and takes her inside the trailer. After he leaves, it is now Katie's turn to sue the shaken Sloan. We don't know for sure what the pig mask dude did to her as Sloan appears even more traumatized than before. On the next scene, Uncle Jason reaches the sheriff's office and comes face to face with the town's perverted sheriff, who we saw earlier. Here we learn that the uncle is actually not just a cop, he is actually an FBI agent. He voices his concerns and is convinced that his niece is kidnapped. To make the plot even more interesting, for some reason, the FBI uncle decides to tell the sheriff about how he knows they're in trouble because Katie did not use a new code word in the latest text message she sent back in the woods. Obviously, the sheriff has informed the kidnappers about the fact that Katie's uncle is an FBI agent and that Katie lied to them about the safe word not wanting the FBI to poke around their human trafficking business. The boss, Boris, tells Jeff to kill them both and dump their bodies, unbeknownst to them. Katie is eavesdropping the conversation. While this is happening, the FBI uncle decides to visit the cafe, where he last dropped off Katie and Sloane. He then asks the barista what he knows. Conveniently, the barista remembers in clear detail what sort of truck Katie and Sloan left with. On the next day, Katie tells Sloan that the kidnappers are planning to kill them. Shortly before the kidnappers arrive, along with Scruffy Guy, they then leave Scruffy Guy behind to watch them. Katie takes this opportunity to seduce him, and once she gets close enough, she rips his throat with her bare teeth. The two women then proceed to free themselves off their chains. Not long after, the sheriff arrives at the scene, presumably to kill them. But just as he steps out of his car, Katie and Sloan have stolen his car. The two women drive back into town and proceed to visit the hardware store to gear up. Some real shit is about to go down now. They then ask the cashier if he knows Boris, the man with the blue truck, and the cashier knows where he lives. On the other side of town, Uncle Jason continues his investigation by visiting the town's car insurance building today. He makes up a story about accidentally colliding with a blue truck and asks who owns it. The boss, Boris just makes it back home. It turns out that Katie and Sloane have sneaked up on him and throw a bunch of nail spike tennis balls at him, injuring him badly. Now that the tables have turned, Boris pleads for his life and even goes as far as offering his money in exchange for sparing his life. Green toolbox in the other room Right then, Uncle Jason pulls up in front of Boris' house. 
Back inside, Katie and Sloane begin questioning him about the identity of the man with the pig mask when Boris refuses to reveal it. Katie and Sloane take a makeshift spear they made and shoves it up his behind, which eventually kills him. When Uncle Jason finally enters the house, it appears that Katie and Sloane have left, and he takes in the sight of a dying Boris. Jason then hears the roar of car engines and storms outside. Katie and Sloane drive off, while Uncle Jason rushed a dying Boris to the hospital. On the next scene, the sheriff informs Uncle Jason that Boris did not make it. Growing even more worried, Uncle Jason decides to try calling Katie's phone, but then Realizing his cover is blown, the sheriff takes out his gun. Katie and Sloane pull up in front of a church, and we learn that Pig Mask Dude is actually the town's priest. Sloane makes her entrance inside the church and comes face to face with her rapist. With Katie's help, the two best friends take down the bastard. As Katie and Sloane drive away, we see that they are now content carefree. But when they make a stop and step out of the car, it turns out that Pig Mask Dude aka the priest is chained behind the truck this whole time. As their final blow they pour gasoline all over him and sets him on fire before driving off. While the two women seem to be thriving, Uncle Jason is now held captive by the sheriff. Even worse, it appears that the sheriff has captured two new young women. Luckily, Katie and Sloane have come to the rescue. They tie up the sheriff and proceed to torture him with a game of Russian roulette. We can see now that the two women are a little unhinged, but I guess in a way we can't blame them. The sheriff begins proclaiming how sorry he is, right when Katie finally finishes him off with a blow to the head. Afterwards, Katie and Sloane free the women and tell them to free Uncle Jason. Jason tries asking the women who killed the sheriff, but they won't answer out of gratitude because Katie and Sloane saved their lives. Next, Katie and Sloane pay a visit to Jed and Lucas' mother's house and decides to drug her the same way that she drugged them a few days ago. They tie her up and take her to the basement where Jed is tied up and gagged. They proceed to bash his head in with baseball bats while the mother is forced to watch. Up next, they take her to Lucas, who is also tied up to a chair. However, instead of beating him to death, they untie him, hand him a bat and threatens him to beat his own mother. Do it. When Lucas voices his unwillingness, they shoot him dead. Afterwards, the two women set up his body so that it looks like he killed himself. It is revealed that they plan to pin all the murders on him. Desperate, the mother offers them money in exchange for sparing her life. But instead of sparing her, Katie takes the lawn mower and brutally murders are with it. On the next scene, Uncle Jason pulls up at Katie's house to pick her and Sloane up. It appears that some time has passed. Katie and Sloane get dropped off at the airport and excitedly make their way to New York City. And this is where the movie ends. How great! That's all the recap for. Even Lamb's Happy 2015. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now. See you again in the next review.